Hello and welcome to the Daily Mail for Wednesday, the 14th of December 2022. Now, we already kind of knew about this, but it has been confirmed by Millwall today that they have signed a Domu Emaku from Shamrock Rovers. So, this is from millwallsc.co.uk. Millwall confirmed a Domu Emaku signing. Millwall Football Club is delighted to announce the signing. From Shamrock Rovers, the 19 year old Irishman will become a Millwall player on the 1st of January 2023 on a long term deal. The exciting frontman had established himself as a fan favourite at Tallaght Stadium, scoring some crucial goals for the Hoops during his time in the senior side. He made his debut in May 2021 against Derry City and late, later that summer netted a home leg winner in the Europa Conference League clash with FC Tueta. Imaku Followed that up with goals in the Champions League this season. Well, Champions League qualifier mm. this season against Bulgarian side Ludogrets, and then he wrote the league against Skippy. While the young prospect cannot play any fixtures for any line side until January 1st, he can and will train with his new teammates at Calvert Road in the meantime. So, yeah, he, um, the transfer can't be completed until the, tr- the window is open. And that is January 1st. Obviously, they then need to uh, transfer the registration from... It's a bit harder when you're going from country to country. It's easier if you're doing it within the country. So, um, there you go. Um, the deal is done. It's a done deal. And it is... It's everywhere. So, this is from londonisonline.co.uk. Now, basically, the same thing, but... Uh, so they've got a few more details here, so let's have a look at this. So um, Imaku flew over to England earlier this week and is able to train with South Londoners until his transfer came through. They've got a quote here that wasn't on what what I just read there, so I don't know where this is from. But this is from the statement on Mill's official website. It says, the striker will feature for Kevin Nugent's under-21 side with a view to making a step up to the first team action in due course. So was that on that story and was it changed? Was it here where it says he cannot play in any fixtures for the Lions? Was it there and they've changed it? I don't know. But that's, this is what I expected, um, what I speculated. Hit the, he's, he's coming in and it's kind of like Tyler Berry. Tyler Berry came in from, from Wimbledon. He had a, he was there or thereabouts uh, around the first team squad playing for the under-21s. He went out alone. Did really, really well. Came back. Then he's he's involved in the first team. Um, so it could be the same thing. But here's the thing: if you are good enough, you are old enough. And they've already put uh, pictures up on uh, Milwaukee's Twitter of him uh, training at the den. I think it was at the uh, at the training session the other day, or maybe it was a new one. Maybe they're just training there every day this week. Uh, yeah, and he's got squad number 22, so, but this quote here where it says the striker will feature for Kevin Nugent's on only one side, said Mill in a statement on their official website, well that's not there anymore, or well, it's not on that story, I've tried to find it, I can't, so has it been edited? I don't know. Um, Immaculate scored in the Europa Conference League, Europa League and Champions League qualifying, Shamrock, which is based in Dublin. But he came through Shamrock's Youth Academy to make his debut in May 2021 against Derry. Uh, a Domo's speed, strength and skill have made him one to watch for a time ahead. And his directness has earned him a fondness from, from many Rovers fans already, is how Imaku is described in his bio on Shamrock Rovers' website. So there you go. And um, literally every media outlet in Ireland, this is from independent.ie, They've all got the Irish Mirror, the Irish Times. They've all got the story. It's uh, kind of a big deal there. They've all got this story. Um, the hoops are set to receive a transfer fee as he still had one year remaining on his current deal, which is interesting. I thought he, he was, I thought he was out of contract and we were paying them because. He came through their academy. I thought it was that kind of situation. But they're saying, oh no. So we've paid transfer fee because he's got one year left on his deal. That transfer fee is rumoured, according to some bloke on Twitter, to be 200,000 euros, which I believe is around 
350,000 pounds or that might be with uh, those are the two figures I've seen um, I haven't checked the tr the the, um, uh, the exchange rate um, but that might be with add-ons and that so I'm sure it will would go up quite high obviously um, they and like percentage sell on fee I'm sure that sure there's one of them in there as well um, so yeah there you go it's all over the uh, all over the Irish media um, media and you can see here it's, it's the most read if you look on the right hand side Shamrock Rovers striker Adam Mbappé signs a long term deal with Millwall so um, there you go the deal done deal the deal is done the done deal um, just kind of interesting that if this is accurate about the, the quote being changed or if, if it's just like I couldn't find it I couldn't see it um, maybe the, maybe it wasn't on the official website maybe it was on Twitter so I don't know but yeah this is what I speculate that he's coming in to play for the under 21s and look if 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 you if you like I said if you're good enough uh, it doesn't matter how old you are and uh, we we will see um, so you can't play until January the 1st so um, we do have a, I'm sure have we got Rotherham game on January the 1st and after that obviously the week after that is the FA Cup game that might be ideal for him to feature in that in the FA Cup game even though it is against Sheffield United um, but uh, yeah so good stuff this is uh, Good signing. I'm I'm kind of pleased about this. This is good. Now that signing has been done. I told you about Josh Key. You one. Apparently that that's uh, uh, that's done deal as well, but that hasn't been announced yet. There is another rumor. Obviously, transfer window is coming up. This is the Twitter of FC Groningen transfer market and they say Cyril Ngonge eft interessa gravet van het inglese milwood that would come in the championship translated from Dutch by Google is Cyril Ngonge has aroused interest from England's Millwall who play in a championship indeed so and this was put up uh, yesterday night 11:08 p.m. Now I looked into this guy. And I'm like, okay, who's this guy? Never heard of him. It's the same league that um, plays in the Eredivisie, which is where obviously Conagan play, which is the same league where obviously we got uh, Zion Fleming. But there is uh, some a concerning situation. So this is from Walford, not Wall as in Millwall, but Wall as in Walloon, W A L F O O T dot B E, um, Belgium uh, news because he's Belgian, he's a Belgian player. Uh, Cyril Ngonge must leave FC Groningen. He does not meet the standards and requirements. Oh, what's going on here? And this is from the first of December. The 22-year-old Belgian has been. As a game been excluded from FC Groningen squad, Cyril Ngonge is still under contract with FC Groningen until June 2025. So he's got three years left, but he has been permanently excluded from the Dutch club's A core. Uh, Cyril is a talented player, but although he has been informed of this on several occasions, it does not meet the standards and requirements we have set for training and playing football at FC Groningen, said technical director. Mark Jan Flederus. Um and that's it. Uh, bit of a mystery though, what's that about? It seems to be a uh, behaviour. So he's he's a decent footballer, but he's not uh his behaviour isn't the best, shall we say. But well, according to this, I don't know. But here we have, this is from gildalandala.nl And this has been tra translated by my uh, Microsoft Edge browser. So it might not make a bit uh, the most sense, but uh, 
Let's have a go and read in this. FC Groningen is done. Bad behaviour. Cyril Ngonge. And sends attacker out of the lane. Indeed, he's, he's out of the lane. Striker Cyril Ngonge is allowed to leave FC Groningen because of his bad behaviour. The 22-year-old Belgium has, not for the first time, been removed from the selection and is training with the youth players under 21 years until he has found a new club. Ngonge's contract runs until mid-2025. So they've got him signed up on the fr for three years to go. And they're willing to just Evo show him out the door. Even though they, they know he's a good footballer. And it says here, um, this is basically the same quote that we've had before. Tiro is a talented player. Da -da -da -da. And Gonge was removed from the squad for a few weeks at the beginning of the season because of his attitude. The Belgian has been playing for Groningen since last year after he came over from RKC Walvik. In 43 league games for Groningen, and Gonge has scored 10 times. It's 10, 10 goals in 43 uh, Eredivisie games. Not to be sniffed at. Uh, not, not as prolific as uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Fleming, but they're all thereabouts. And if we. Uh, there's. Th this one here seems to be the original uh, decision. FC Groningen finds Ngonga and Mazampa. I don't know if they were drunk, but they weren't fit. Interesting. So here we go. Let's have a read of this. Um, let's just wait for it to translate. Translated, okay. FC Groningen finds Ngonga and Mazampa. I don't know if they were drunk, but they weren't fit. FC Groningen has imposed a maximum fine on its players, Asiro and Ngonga, both because they did not arrive at training fit and too late on Monday. This is from November, 14th of November. It was a particularly restless day for the Northerners anyway. Uh, we sent both players away this morning, the technical director told RTV Nord. I don't know if they were drunk, but they won on time and they were fit enough. Flederus could not say yet uh, what the further con consequences are for the attacker. Uh, for Ongonga is not the first incident, I have spoken to him about that. Uh, Gronigan trained for the last time before the winter break on Monday. And said goodbye to Frank Wilm after coach was fired after the defeat against Fortuna Sita. Uh, after his dismissal, the Germans strongly criticised uh, Flatterus. Uh, I felt mentally unsafe. Groningen is the is in the area of Divise, but just above the relegation line in the 15th place. So you've got the manager getting sacked and then complaining about this technical director, saying he wasn't meant he was felt mentally unsafe because of it. This technical director's sending players home and uh, seemingly putting him on the transfer list. Letting him, he's basically training with the youth team until he leaves. Um, seems a bit of a basket case of a club, uh, if I'm honest. Now, what, what, um, what res responsibility does that have on your own behaviour? If you're a footballer involved in a situation like that, does that mean that Cyril Ngonge is uh, is he a problem? Is he does he have a, a bad behaviour, or is it is he just in a situation where he feels hopeless and it's not a good situation and he doesn't want to be there, but he's contracted for three years and he can't leave? Um, but is this the type of player we need to be signing? Um, I mean, we've had players like this in the past, the Russians and that. Um, they were heavy drinkers. Um, there were other players, uh, Henderson, I think. Um, you hear sorts, all sorts of stories about stuff, uh, training situations and, and stuff. So it won't be the first time, but um, how, how how much of that can you excuse if they're a good player? I mean, is he the centre forward that we need? And doesn't matter if he turns up late for training, I don't know, but uh, like I said, maybe it's just that he's, in, he's at a club that's uh, not being run properly and he doesn't, he doesn't feel like he should um, turn up and, and uh, participate fully and correctly, especially like it was the last day 
the last day before they they went for winter break. So like he's uh, well, why are we coming in? Let's just I'll go on my winter break now. Obviously, so it seems they had the game on the Saturday against Fortuna Zitter. They lost two three. They're off Sunday. They come in Monday, and then they're off for a winter break. And he's like, well. Why are we doing that? Why do I have to get up the fucking early on Monday just to come in? It's like, if you had to do that for your job, right? If you're breaking up for Christmas and they tell you you need to come in Christmas Eve for a couple of hours, you'll be like, why Why do I have to do that? Like, what, what's the point in that? And then when you get to the office or wherever you work, you get there and there's literally nothing to fucking do and you're just dossing around the, the office like I could be at home with my fucking kids why am I here where's the point of this so maybe he's got that kind of attitude but if something like if, if the people in charge of the company where you work if it, if, if it doesn't make sense you're going to be like why what's the point and then maybe you're going to do something about that but um, anyway that's that's the questionable side of Cyril Ngonga. How about his footballing prowess? Can he play? Can, can you play, son? Can you play? He's 22 years old. He's born on the 26th of May, 2000. 2000. People are being born in 2000. And they are doing stuff right now. Makes you feel old, doesn't it? Um, so this is his stats for this season. Um, Three goals and eight starts in the era divise, two assists, uh, two point five shots per game, one point six aerials one and two man of the matches from those eight starts. So not too bad for a team that's fighting relegation. And just remember, um Fortuna Sittard were dabbling with relegation as well in last season's era divise before Zion Fleming left. Which is the reason why they didn't let him go in the January transfer window. They wanted him to stay to the end of the season so that they would uh he could help them stay up, and I believe he did. So there you go. But uh, here we go. Um, he's AMR, playing out on the right, uh, playing centre forward, playing right midfield, and playing uh, attacking left, but mostly playing AMR and forward. Now, strengths and weaknesses. So strength, aerial duels, and finishing. Fantastic. Weaknesses, holding onto the ball, passing, crossing, discipline. Hmm, okay, well, if he keeps giving the ball away at the den, he is not uh, going to like it pretty quickly because he's going to be told uh, in unison by the crowd um, at what we think about that. Uh, style of play, likes to dribble, likes to cut inside, likes to play long balls. Does not dive into tackles, but he does commit fouls often. Okay. So there you go. Uh, if we move on to his matches, and you can see these are his matches this season. Um, so started the season on fire uh, against Volendam. Uh, got man of the match, got an assist, got the goal in a 2 2 draw. Uh, in the game against Ajax, they lost 6 1, but he got the goal. He's still got a 7.06 rating. And then after that, he got man of the match in a 1 0 win against Go Ahead Eagles, 7.42. You see, he scores. Um, he scores are pretty high, 6.5 above. Uh, anytime it's below that, it's because he had a substitute appearance and didn't play a lot of minutes on the pitch. So there you go. These are his um, matches this season. If we look at. Uh, over the last couple of seasons, so here he is um, for RK Say Walwick. Uh, Fifteen starts, five substitute appearances, five goals. Uh, gets signed by FC Groningen. Nineteen starts, seven goals. And then, so of course, so far this season, so he's still still young. He's only had looks like three pro seasons. Uh, he was at Club Bruges, but I don't think that was just kind of like um, 
I think they were probably already out of the Champions League at that time, so they just put a youth player in. That's what it seems, because there's a gap there between 2019-2020. Uh, um, so, seems he come through the Club Bruges youth system. Um, and then he's m moved into the Eredivisie, which I, I think is definitely a bigger and better league than the Jupiler League, which is the, the Belgian. Um, but he knows how to score goals, and you can see his numbers are getting better. Um, year after year. So, again, you're just looking at the um, situation with the uh, drinking and, and, and the whatnot and the getting in trouble with the uh, technical director. And you think, is that a fundamental, critical character flaw? Or is that him reacting to a bad situation? You really don't know until you sign him. And then, but do you want to be taking that risk? Now, I would take the risk because it's not my money. It's John Berylson's money. But would John Berylson take that risk? Don't know. Um, so, yeah, we have been linked with, uh, we have signed a Domu Maku. We are rumoured to be in, to have signed Josh Kiel, which I told you about the other day. And we are being linked with Cyril Ngonge from FC Groningen. So there you go. That's your transfer news uh, so far today. And it's only the 14th of December. I mean, transfer window hasn't even bloody opened yet. It's uh, fantastic. I imagine um, the reason why all this business is getting done early, I don't know if other teams are doing their business early as well. Because football stopped, didn't it? It all stopped. And it all eyes are on the World Cup, so people can have meetings and, and whatnot and fly around and, and do stuff, sign deals. So I imagine that's what's going on. Um, now, moving on to this from taxipoint.co.uk. Yeah, what is this about? Why is this? Why am I showing you this? Well, I'll tell you. A young businessman donates £15,000 to taxi charity so that war vets can enjoy Christmas lunch and meal. Oh, yes. Um, this happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they are writing it up now. So, a 27-year-old businessman spread the festive cheer by donating £50,000 to the charity match for military veterans, for the taxi charity for military veterans to pay for veterans to enjoy Christmas lunch at Millwall Football Club. War veterans from across London, the South East, Suffolk and Wiltshire gather together at the den for the annual taxi charity for military veterans Christmas lunch. Joining the veterans in certain uh, conflicts including World War II, Northern Ireland, Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, serving military personnel, charity supporters and volunteer London cab drivers was 27-year-old entrepreneur Johnny Gallagher, who had generously covered all the costs for the much-loved event. Having grown up listening to stories from his granddad, who had served in two, war two wars and having been inspired by the leadership of Winston Churchill, the bravery of World War II heroes, including Douglas Bader, and the selfishness of those like British nurses Molly Avershed and Dorothy Field, who were killed trying to save dying soldiers on the beaches of Normandy, Johnny has a huge respect for the spirit of those who had lived or fought through war. It was sad that recent events, including the young girl who poured her own feces on Captain Moore's statue, uh, the burning of the puppies on Remembrance Day, and a new statistic that shows that only one in five young people will have a positive view of Winston Churchill, triggered Johnny to make the £15,000 donation to the taxi charity for military veterans who have worked with World War II veterans for 75 years. His donation covered the food, drinks, gifts, and transport costs uh, of the lunch for 240 guests and allows the charity to, uh, to some much needed breathing space in what is a very difficult time to fundraise. Uh, Johnny Gallagher, a businessman and entrepreneur, said, I am so disappointed and angry that my generation is seen as uncaring and ungrateful for what the men and women did for this country during World War II. By donating to this wonderful charity, I wanted to make a strong statement that not all young people have these views. I completely understand and appreciate that without the sacrifices these heroes made, me, my family, and millions of others, 
others would not be alive today. Um, I don't know if that's him there, or, not, or obviously the one on the left. Um, I don't know. He's a bit old. He looks a bit old for 27, so I don't know if that's him, or if that's someone else. Uh, Brian Heffernan, chairman of the Taxi Charity from Lead 3 Veterans, said the greatest challenge facing us as we enter our 75th year is raising funds to continue supporting our very special veterans. Uh, every charity was affected by the fundraising restrictions during the pandemic, and having come through that, we are now facing the cost of living crisis, which will see most people having to reassess how they allocate any money they may have previously donated to good causes. To have received this incredibly generous donation from Johnny is truly wonderful, and we cannot thank him enough. Johnny Gallagher had it. I had an amazing day with a tax charity meeting men and women who gave so much during World War II and other conflicts. At lunch, I sat with World War II veterans Ken Hay, who served with the 4th Battalion Dorset Regiment and was taken POW during the fighting at Falaise in Normandy. Marie Scott Wren, who transmitted messages to the beaches on D-Day. Dorothea Barron, who worked in Naval Signals and Charity Ambassador. Darren Swift, who served with the Army's dog unit and lost both legs to an IRA bomb in 1991. Uh, I took the opportunity to talk to many other veterans too, including Don Turrell, 97, who, when I asked what he thought about the problems we face today, told me that he grew up with five siblings who all shared the same bed and one sheet, and that when his father returned home from work, he would lay his coat over the top to give them a little bit more warmth. Uh, I later asked him what the worst bit about World War II was, and he replied succinctly, Seeing my friend shot to pieces. Uh, our views were certainly aligned with that too many younger people have no idea their misplaced feelings of entitlement and privilege, and should remember them that those who came before sacrificed to allow them to have what they so often take for granted. I can honestly say that being at the lunch was an experience I will never ever forget, and will continue supporting the work of the taxi charity. So there you go, free, um, free cheers for, for Johnny Gallagher there for stepping up and covering all the costs of this event. Good stuff, um, yeah. And that's from TaxiPoint.co.uk there. Uh, we're going to finish the video with bringing you this, which I couldn't bring you the other day because it hasn't been done. Uh, sometimes the guy is late with his stuff, so it's not in time the stats video on the day after the game but this is the xg timeline of the Millwall versus wigan game and as you can see so obviously the black line is wigan and they had that chance early doors around about the third minute which uh long managed to save one-handed and then they kind of don't have another shot on goal until the 30 uh third minute when they scored and uh you can see that uh, we literally, after they score, we keep we try and put the effort in, and our two best chances basically came after their goal straight away. We had one that didn't go in, and then the one that did go in. And uh, in the second half, you can see we tried when we at the start of the second half, and Wigan didn't really. They had a uh, two shots. That's all they had. In the second half around about the 60th minute. But you can see that it's been mentioned that, that the lack of an impact sub uh, of an attacking player on the bench who could, who could come on and change the game. And you, there is no discernible difference from when the substitutes came on. Uh, nothing happened. I think they come on around the 6th, 69th minute. There's no, there's no increase in shots for Millwall from around that time. So there you go. I just want to share that with you. And while we're here, let's have a look at Luton because we're obviously playing him on Sunday. And it looks like their new manager is having a massive impact in turning them into a boring shit team. Um, they had like three shots that whole 90 minutes. Um, they went, they got lucky to score um, with their second shot of the game, which only took place in the 33rd minute. Oh, this is them here. They're in orange. Uh, and then they went out in the second half and tried to defend for 40 minutes, which is absolutely uh, stupid. It doesn't work. You cannot do that. Stop doing that. I remember back in the day when we all used to do that when we were playing Neil Harris, and it never worked. And you can see here, they just let it just led to Middlesbrough just coming at them all the time. Shot after shot after shot. And from the 75th minute onwards, it's just an endless slaughter. And they end up getting the goal. In the 90th minute, that, that 
gives me a little bit of win. So there you go. This is who we're playing next. Hopefully, they play as shit as this uh, on Sunday and we can absolutely smash them. Because they only had an XG of 0 0.2, which they managed to get the one goal. Which is kind of good when you've got a, a, an XG that's so low and you still uh, managed to get one goal. Uh, ours was 1.1 .1 and we got the goal, so that's fair enough. There or thereabouts, but they got 0 0.2 and managed to get a goal. So they overperformed their XG. But they tried to defend, for, they were trying to be clever in the second half, defend for 40, 40 minutes, and it clearly didn't work. So, I don't know why um, this new manager, this Rob Edwards, why he's been so lionized, why he's been so um, exalted. Because he did well at Forest Green Rovers. I, don't know, I think it's just, um, there's kind of a desperation for new managers, new names new people to champion um, because uh, we've heard the manager Mary go round I think people are just sick and tired of the same old names so I think any time they get someone who, who seems to be a bit decent they get pushed on and uh, this Rob Edwards seems to be one of them and uh, I don't think he's going to do very well at Luton to be honest so he got found out at Watford and he may very well get found out at Luton. I hope he gets found out on Sunday, uh, 11 30, Millwall. Let's go. And on that note, thank you for watching. Goodbye.